What is going on guys, it's Pungeon here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate guide to increasing FPS and getting the best performance in Team Fortress 2. The main purpose of this guide is to ensure that you guys are getting the lowest amount of input lag as possible, the highest frame rates possible, and the best overall experience both visually and performance wise. As for everyone in my guides, if you guys can please leave some feedback in the comment section down below, leave any questions or queries you might be having, and results if you manage to get them as well, and make sure that you do leave a like on this video if you do find it helpful, and share it around with any friends, or teammates, or anyone else on Steam that you might find might benefit from this guide. This guide is aimed at everyone, doesn't matter whether or not you're using a low-end system, a medium-end system, or a high-end system. This guide is here to make sure that you're getting the most out of your system and the best performance possible, no matter what budget you're on. So in this video, we're going to be going over both game-specific and Windows-specific optimizations to ensure that you're getting the best out of your machine, and then we get everything running how it should be. So with that being said, guys, let's get right on into the video. Okay, so starting off, what you guys need to go ahead and do is go down into the description below and download the TF2 Ultimate FPS increase pack provided by myself just hit the download link download it and inside of that folder what we're going to be finding is a bunch of configs and stuff so you can follow along with this video it's one nice small little package file that you guys can go ahead and download open up and you can follow along with everything inside of this video once you guys have downloaded it you will need either winrar or 7zip to unpack this file just go around google install one of those programs if you don't already have it then what you need to do is put it onto your desktop right click hit extract here and you'll be given a folder just like this inside of the folder you'll find there is a cfgs folder a unpark cpu app folder c setup and launch options alongside time resolution. Once you guys are inside of there, that's absolutely fine. And what we're gonna be doing then is starting off with the guide. Okay, so starting off, what we're gonna be doing is going down into Steam, going over to TF2, right clicking, going to properties, and going to the set launch options tab. Inside of here, we're going to be setting the launch options we're going to be using for the game. And to find the launch options in which we're going to be using, we want to go back over to the FPS pack provided by myself. Go inside of the folder and go to the launch options.txt. Inside of here, you're going to be noticing the launch options here at the top. We'll start with dash console, no 3D DirectX at the top there. And the option inside of here you guys need to make unique for your PC is the dash threads command. Inside of here, you wanna be changing this number to the amount of processes on your PC. To find this out very simply, go down to the taskbar, right click and open task manager. Inside of here, go to the performance tab, click on CPU, and then you'll find cores and logical cores down here. Under here, you wanna to go to logical cores and whichever that number is, for me it's six, you're gonna be setting your threads to. So that might be two, four, six, eight, might even be more, might be less. But whichever your logical processes is, that is what we're going to then be setting it to. So input your number there, for me it's six. Then simply go to the start of the launch options, drag all the way across until you end with plus exec auto exec .cfg, just like that. Right click and copy. Then go inside of Steam, head over to the launch options tab again. Inside of here, simply hit paste. It should look just like this. Once that's done, press OK, and then you can then exit out. Then after installing the launch options, we're going to be booting up Team Fortress 2 to go into the in-game visual settings. And we're then going to prime them ready for the config we're about to install after that. So simply boot into the game. Okay, and then once we've booted into the game, don't take any notice that the fact that I'm running it in windowed mode, it's just to ensure that the video records properly. Okay, so once we're then in the game, we're going to be then be going to the settings option found here at the bottom. Go to options and click on side of there. Then go to the video tab found at the top. You can set the resolution to whichever you might wish to do so. Display mode, I recommend running this in full screen and then also set your aspect ratio according to your monitor. If you don't know what it is, just leave it on the default option. What we're interested in doing then is going down to the advanced tab and then pretty much copying the options I've set inside of here. Model detail we're going to be setting to low. Texture detail we're going to be setting to medium. You can lower this if you want the best FPS possible, but for a nice balance of FPS and visuals, I like to go with medium. Shader detail low, simple reflections, shadow detail low, color correction, we can actually enable that. Anti-aliasing mode, none. Filtering mode is going to be set to bilinear. Wait for V-Sync, disabled, motion blur disabled. Field of view is personal preference. You can change that to whichever you wish to do so. Multi-core rendering, make sure that is enabled. High dynamic range, make sure that is on none and uncheck the use bloom effect when available. Now after this guide is done, if you guys wish to bump up your visual quality slightly or lower it slightly, you can then still come back into the advanced video options found here and you can bump up some of these details after the guide if you want more of a visual increase, or you can also bump them down slightly more if you want more FPS. But that's absolutely fine. Once you guys are going ahead and set those options, press OK, make sure to apply them and then press OK, and then we can simply exit out of our game. Next, what we're gonna be doing is going ahead and installing our custom game config. To do this, right click on TF2 and go to properties. Then what we're going to do is go to the local files tab found here at the top and go to browse local files. 
Inside of here, you're going to be finding all of the TF2 folders and files. Inside of here, we're interested in going to the TF folder, then into the CFG folder. Then once we're inside of here, we can go ahead and we can open up the FPS pack. Then what we need to go ahead and do is go into the CFGs folder, and then you need to make a decision whether or not you have a bad connection or a good internet connection for the game. If you guys have an average or a bad internet connection, go with the bad slash average connection config. Or if not, if you guys have a good connection or a stable connection, and you never really have any ping issues, and you're just happy with how your connection performs, then go with the good connection config. Doesn't matter which of the two you're going to go here, both will give the same FPS and performance results. One is just more optimized for faster connections and one is more optimized for slower connections. So make sure that you go with the corresponding one that actually matches your connection. So for me, I'm going to be going with the good connection. Then what you're going to be finding inside of here is an autoexec.cfg. What you simply need to go ahead and do is the folder we found earlier on. And what you simply need to go ahead and do is get the autoexec ready to drag into the folder we went into, the TFCFG one, and simply drag that in. Once that's then inserted, what you can then go ahead and do is you can simply just exit out. Then what we're going to be doing is optimizing the game exe to run properly inside of Windows. Go ahead, go into Steam, right click on TF2, Properties, go to Local Files at the top, Browse Local Files, then inside of here we're going to be setting the hl2.exe found here. We're going to be right clicking, going onto Properties, Go into the compatibility tab. Now inside of here, what we're going to be doing is we're then going to be enabling two options. If these options are not inside of here or they are worded differently, do not worry. If they're worded differently for you guys, go ahead and enable them as well. If they are not here for you guys, don't worry about it. You might just have to upgrade to the latest version of Windows 10, the full creators update, which I do recommend pretty much everyone goes ahead and does, but we'll be getting onto that later on in the video. So if you guys go to the compatibility tab, go to the override high DPI scaling behaviors, scaling performed by, check that, and then also check disable full screen optimizations. If you guys are done inside of there, hit the apply button and press OK. Then we can simply exit out of that folder. Another quick FPS increase tip for you guys that do not use the Steam overlay on game or you don't find it helpful or you don't even find yourself using it, go ahead, go into the top left, go to settings inside of Steam, then go to the in-game tab and just disable the enable in-game overlay whilst in-game and then press OK. But for you guys that do often invite people to games and you do use the Steam in-game browser or you do use the overlay, make sure that you keep that enabled. But for you guys that don't, I can also offer a slight FPS. FPS bump. Now what we're going to be doing is going onto the Windows specific optimizations which will help you increase FPS not just in TF2 but pretty much any game that you play on your PC and ensure that your PC is running to the best of its ability which will one reduce input lag and give you better FPS in games and two optimize Windows so you're getting the best performance and response time inside of Windows itself. Starting off with doing this we're going to be going down into the bottom left and we're going to be clearing our Windows temporary files and to do this what you need to go ahead and do is type percent app data percent down in the bottom left and then press enter inside of here we're going to be going to the app data folder found here at the top then go to local scroll all the way down to see a folder called temp inside of this folder we're going to go in from the top to the bottom and highlighting everything inside of here now all of these folders and files inside of here are excess dump files excess caching files that have been dumped here by programs on your operating system and just left to rot and take up space so what they're going to be simply doing is right clicking and pressing delete you'll say that the action cannot be completed for all folders and files inside of here that's absolutely fine just hit do this for all current items and hit skip but ask that again check the same thing and hit skip now the only folders and files that are going to be left inside of here are going to be the only ones actually being used by your operating system or applications everything else was just excess dump files taking up space in your computers now it's always fun to get feedback from you guys and see how much you actually just removed from that folder sometimes people come back and tell me a couple hundred megabytes sometimes i've heard stories up to 60 plus gigabytes coming from that folder depending on how old your windows installation is so do let me know down in that comment section below if it's a wacky number or if it's absolutely tiny but either way you'll definitely be freeing up a lot of space Base there and optimizing your machine whilst doing so. Which then done inside of there, I like to exit out and also empty the recycling bin. Now for any of you Discord users out there that often have it open whilst you're playing games, whether it's to communicate or talk to or whatever with anyone else, what I then like to go ahead and do is to ensure that Discord is not eating up any excess resources. This might sound small, but it can also increase FPS on higher end systems as well. Is I like to go into Discord, go to the settings cog found by your username, then go over to the appearance tab, scroll down until you see hardware acceleration and i like to turn that off it's on by default make sure that you just flick the slider off and once you flicked it off it's going to ask that discord is then going to have to be restarted let discord restart and it should restart without hardware acceleration on then also for you google chrome users especially those that keep google chrome open often when they play games go ahead go into google chrome press the three dots there at the top right to customize go down into settings it's scroll down to the advanced tab found here at the bottom once you're in the advanced tab scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find a use hardware acceleration when available mode make sure that you just turn that off and relaunch chrome if it asks to do so 
Once that's then turned off, we can then exit out of Chrome and continue on with the video. And just make sure once you relaunch this to come back onto the video and we can then continue. Next, what we're then going to be doing is unparking our CPU cores to ensure that our hardware, our operating system, and the game itself can access the resources as it needs it, and as much as it needs it, or as little as it needs it. CPU parking can sometimes throttle the application from being able to use all the resources it needs to, which can then cause stuttering, FPS drops, and such inside a game. So to do this and unlock the full potential of your CPU, this will not cause any extra heat or do anything with a warranty or anything. This is absolutely fine to do inside of Windows. Go inside of the CPU Unpark app, and then open up the Unpark CPU application. Inside of here then what you need to go ahead and do is hit the check status button this might take a little while as it's going ahead and checking your cpu status inside of the registry but just let it go ahead and do it and then once the unpark manager has gone ahead and found the status it's more than likely going to be telling you guys that the status is set to parked if this is the case what we're then going to do is go ahead and go to the unpark all button and press that again this might take a little while depending on the speed of your system but go ahead and let it do its thing and then when the cpu unpark manager has completed you'll see that the status should then be set to unparked once you guys gone ahead and done with that you can simply exit out of the utility and it is done and moving on from there we're going to be making sure that your operating system has access to the maximum amount of resources that you have so what you need to go ahead and do now is go into the bottom left and type in ms config once you're inside of there press enter and this tab will open up Go to the boot section found here at the top, select your Windows 10 C drive or Windows 7, whichever operating system you're running. Then go to the advanced options found here at the top, select number of processors and go to the maximum amount of processors available. For me, that is six. Make sure that you use your scroll wheel to ensure that there are not any hidden options down under there. It might be two for you, might be four, six, eight, might be more, might be less. For me, the maximum number is six, so we're gonna be highlighting that. And then making sure it's selected and pressing OK. What we're then gonna be doing is going ahead and pressing the apply button and then press OK. It's gonna let you know that your PC needs to restart but we're not going to be doing that yet as we're going to be restarting after we've done all the optimizations so go with exit without restart next what we're going to be doing is enabling a registry edit to ensure that your games can use the maximum amount of resources they need to ensure that stuttering is kept to a minimal and fps is kept to a maximum even if you're running multiple programs on your pc to do this go ahead and go down into the bottom left type in run and type in reg edit press ok then inside of here, go to the H key local machine tab, go into the drop down menu inside of there, then go into the software tab. Scroll down until you see the Microsoft folder inside of here, then simply go into the drop down menu inside of the Microsoft folder. Then scroll down all the way until you see the W section, and we're going to be going into the Windows NT folder found here. Then go into the current version folder, scroll down until you see the M section, and then go into multimedia. Then click on the system profile folder and then once you guys are inside of the system profile folder go onto the right hand side is right click select new and then go to d word inside of here we're going to be calling this d word value system responsiveness and then press enter to ensure that is saved then go inside of the system responsiveness d word value you just created and set the number of zeros to around about five or six and then press ok once we're then done with that, we're then going to be prioritizing games inside of here. So go into the tasks folder found here on the left hand side, go into the games folder. And once you're inside of the games folder, go over to the right hand side and we're going to be selecting the GPU priority key. Double click on side of there and we're going to be setting the GPU priority to 6. It should defaultly be set to 8, but we're going to be changing it to 6. Once that's done, press OK. Then go over to the priority key inside of here and then also set that to 6 press OK, then go over to the scheduling category folder inside of here, double click and set the value data to high with a capital H, then press OK and we're done inside of registry editor and we can simply exit out. Again, those changes will not be applied until you restart your PC for the next time. Don't bother doing that yet as we're going to be restarting at the end of the video. Next, what we're going to be doing is ensuring that Windows is getting the best resources it possibly can with your Windows power options and optimizing those. So to do this, go into the bottom left and type in power. Then you can select any of the options inside of here, which feature the battery and the cord going around it and simply go up to the top and go to power options. Go to the show additional power plans inside of here and find the high performance power plan. Select it and then hit change plan settings. But what we're interested in doing is going to the change advanced power settings found here. Instead of here, go to the hard disk option, turn hard disk off after, and then set that to zero minutes and press apply. Scroll down, go to processor power management, select the minimum processor state and the maximum processor state and ensure they are both set to 100%. To change these values, if they're not set to 100, is simply click on the percentage and set the number to 100 and then press enter and set the number to 100. And once that's then done, you can again simply go ahead and press apply, okay, 
save changes and exit out of the power options. Now what I'm going to be doing is moving on and optimizing the visuals inside of Windows. To do this, go into the bottom left and type this PC, right click on this PC and go to properties. Once you're on this page, go to the left hand side and go to the advanced system settings tab found here at the top left. Then go to the advanced tab found inside of here and go to performance and hit settings. Instead of here, go to visual effects and set them to custom. Then let's go ahead and uncheck pretty much every option inside of here besides show thumbnails and set of icons and smooth edges of screen fonts. I also personally like to turn off smooth edges of screen fonts because I personally don't like it. And it does also help out FPS just that little bit. But if you guys wish to keep that smooth Windows font, that's absolutely fine and you can keep that enabled. But I personally turn it off. Once that's then set, press apply, OK. Next, what we're going to be doing is going into the FPS pack provided once again. Then going to be going to the C setup 537, double clicking and opening it. Inside of here, this is the setup for C Cleaner, which is a fantastic utility program for Windows to ensure that your system is clutter free and running to the best of its ability. What we're going to then go ahead and do is simply make sure that Get Avast Free is unchecked and then hit the install button. Then, once it's done, hit the Run Cleaner button. And then we can go to the Cleaner tab found here in the top left. And what I then like to go ahead and do is go to the Applications tab and I like to uncheck Internet Cache, History, and Cookies off Google Chrome because that's my personal browser. And then, what I like to go ahead and then do is press the Analyze button. And once the analysis is complete, it's going to give you a basic overall of everything it scans your system for and what it can remove for you and how many files inside of each subcategory and go ahead and remove and optimize for you. So for me, it completed it in 1.2 seconds and it can remove 144 megabytes. Sometimes this can fluctuate from around 10 megabytes all the way up to around about 60 plus gigabytes, depending on whether or not you've run this before. And once it's then done, go ahead and hit the run cleaner option and press OK. It might come back and tell you programs need to be closed. That's absolutely fine. So press yes. And then once it's done, it's going to let you know that the cleaning is complete. It's going to give you a basic overall summary, just like it did beforehand. And it's going to tell you how long it took to complete that. And then once that's done, you're pretty much done with CCleaner. But I do recommend using CCleaner either on the first day or the last day of every month to ensure that your system is running to the best of its ability and clutter free to ensure that it can't be running into any issues. Another great thing that CCleaner offers, is it also offers you a basic overall of your system specs at the top. Now, what I want you guys to go ahead and pay attention to here is right at the end you'll see what your GPU is. For me, I have an NVIDIA GeForce GPU. For you, it might be an AMD Radeon or it might also be an NVIDIA GeForce GPU. If that is the case, what we're then going to be going ahead and doing is installing the latest GPU drivers for our GPU. It actually shocks me how many people don't do this on their systems. I know people out there have had their systems for around about two years and have not updated their GPU drivers once, which is absolutely crazy because new GPU drivers come out around about once every month for most GPUs, which offer the latest and greatest in performance improvements even on older titles such as tf2 and ensuring that you're getting the best overall experience out of your graphics card so it's crazy how many people don't do this and it can solve so many fps issues and give you such significant fps increases just from doing this so take a mental note now of what gpu you're running and once you guys have taken a mental note of what gpu you're running go down into the description below and click on the corresponding link either it be an amd radeon card or a geforce gtx nvidia card and go to the corresponding update link if you geforce users go ahead and go onto the website go to the automatic driver updates tab here hit the download for the geforce experience go through that install it and it will run everything for you and update everything for you if you amd radeon users it's a very simple process as well go to the website provided go down to the automatically detect and install your driver and hit the download now option go ahead and install that and it'll go ahead and do everything for you and install the latest drivers on there and make sure that your system is running to the best of its ability and once you guys have gone ahead and install those gpu drivers we can then continue on we are then ready to reboot our system. So go ahead at this moment in time, go into the bottom left, right click on your power option and hit restart. Once you're done with that, then come back to this video and we can then continue on. Okay, so once you guys have restarted your systems and everything is up and running and you've got Steam open and you're ready to go, go into the FPS pack provided one more time and get the time resolution application out of there and drag it onto your desktop. This is a program to ensure, make sure that the operating system, the game application and your hardware can all talk to each other at a much more optimized rate to ensure that the response time in between all of those talking to each other is drastically reduced, increasing your frame rate and reducing input lag and stuttering. So make sure that that program is on the desktop. Then if you guys are using Razer Cortex, make sure that you go ahead and boot into that now. And you can also manually turn on the boost if you wish to do so at this point. And then we can boot into the timer resolution application and we can set the current resolution to maximum. Now inside of here, that's going to be then set to the lowest value possible to ensure that everything is running at the most optimized rate. And what we'll like to do then is, is minimize that whilst we're playing. And then once we're done playing, no matter how long or short that might be, close your game, go back to timer 
resolution, set it to default, and then exit out. But assuming that we're about to boot into the game, we're going to be enabling time resolution by opening it, hitting the maximum resolution here found on the left hand side, and minimizing the game. And simply go over to Steam, go to Team Fortress 2, and then you can simply just go ahead and press the play button. Another thing you guys can go ahead and do is go into the advanced options found here on the bottom right hand side. Scroll down to the HUD options and then you can turn off use glow effects, turn off enable team glow effects and use player model player class HUD as well. You can also scroll down to the pyrovision borders and enable those to be static, disabled and disabled. Enable roam vision when available, also have that unchecked. And target ID floating health bar can also be disabled. And then go down to the performance options and disable the weather effects and then disable html message of the days the multiplayer decal limit can then be enabled to nine also go ahead and go down to disable sprays and then once you're done with that you can simply press ok then once you guys are then booted into the game you've got everything open and you're ready to play you can then go ahead and press the find game button inside of here and then open up your developer console by pressing the tilde key which is found above tab on the left hand side of your keyboard and below escape that will open up the developer console. And once you guys are inside a game, you can then go ahead and hit find game. You can go into any matches you want to do. I'm just going to be going into training to ensuring that our settings are on. Just go into any training mode to ensure that everything is set up correctly. And then once you guys have booted into game, whether that be a training mode if you just want to test it out or you've gone into a public match, you will notice in the top right hand side, you will see an FPS counter and it will also give you information about the map that you're playing. If you see that, that means that everything is enabled correctly and that's absolutely fantastic. If you do not see that, you're going to have to go into the developer console to do this go ahead and go to the left hand side of your keyboard and above the tab key and below the escape key is the tilde key press that button and you'll open up the developer console like so and inside of here what you simply need to do is type exec space auto exec and once that's done press enter and it'll go ahead and load the exec manually for you now if you guys want an additional fps increase you can go ahead and go into your in-game settings found here at the bottom go to the video options and you can also turn down the screen resolution if you wish to do so but make sure that the screen is running in full screen mode here at the top you can bump that down if you wish to get any extra performance gains but for the majority of you you'll notice absolutely stellar performance as you can see here running at 720p if i wish to do so i'm going from around about 500 to 800 fps all the way up to around about a thousand on a relatively medium end system now which is slightly dated so there you guys have it that is my ultimate fps increase guide for tf2 if you guys got any questions queries or just want to leave your results down in the comment section below that'll be deeply appreciated if you guys can also go around and share this video around with any friends or teammates that might be playing tf2 that could also benefit from the increase that'll be absolutely fantastic as well and feel free to also put in any fps tips and tricks that i might have missed out in this video down in that description below to help out other people and get a healthy discussion going on down there if you guys wish to further increase your fps and overall windows performance you can also check out my gpu overclocking guide which will be linked down in the description below and also on the screen now and you can also check out an overall performance guide to optimizing windows 10 for gaming performance to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible you can check out both of those videos if you wish to maximize your results thank you very much for watching this video guys i've been Panjano. And I'm out.